kind of laugh, the music ended, and it, I go, oh, got to go to work. <laughs> so you said Carol Hubright, right? Yes. So, okay. If I don't write things down, then I forget. So first of all, let me greet everybody today. So how are you? Good morning. Okay, would you turn to one another and greet one another? I don't hear much greeting. Okay. <laughs> I see hands waving, but not much soon. Um, we have Brenda Ridley with us today, and I had the joy of being able to visit. Um, Hazel was her mom, and we've had Hazel on the prayer list. Hazel was a dear friend of Suzanne Bowen's, and I had gone to visit her a couple times. And Hazel is in heaven with the Lord right now, but we welcome Brenda today. So um, would you please greet Brenda and welcome her? So. Um, I want to do a special thank you to Sue Rowe for being the liturgist today, so thank you, Sue. And please make sure, I think everybody here you all know, but Bulletin and Purple Hymn Book, so that you're all set. We have special birthdays this week. Um, I will probably say the wrong name wrong, but it's Laura Ale, I think, is that how she pronounces it? Ed Lotz, Jessica Burgess, Roxanne Shea, and Laura Seely this week. So we have lots of birthdays. So if you see any of them, please wish them a happy birthday. I think Ed and Cheryl had another um, engagement today, so otherwise we'd sing to Ed. The flowers today are in memory of Mr. and Mrs. John Aller and Ruth Aller by the Aller Memorial. So they're up front. And this particular week, um, some of you may remember, I think she went by the name Jean more than Caroline, but Caroline Patchett, her funeral is tomorrow. Her husband was Robert. He died back in 2012. And so I am doing the funeral tomorrow at 2 at Waterman's. Um, and I w finally was kind of told that they often called her Jean instead of Caroline. So um, we're still collecting undies. It's filling up, so that's great downstairs um, for common threads. And I want to thank everyone who helped out with the children's garden. Um, it was five different times, but I think that it was a success in terms of being able to get out in the community and to visit with people. Um, so we will, as the mission task force, we'll revisit that, but I think maybe they'll be trying to keep something similar next year. We'll see. Session is Wednesday at 6 o'clock, and we also have the Bible study going on on Wednesday at 1 and at 4. I won't be in until around 11 on Friday, as I have an appointment for my son. So I'll be here sometime between 10.30 and 11. So if you need me, um, that will be Friday. And then it is official as of the Presbytery meeting. Um, Western Presbyterian has a new pastor, the Reverend Hodong Huang. So we can congratulate them now. <laughs> OK. Um, next week, there is a music and worship meeting after church at 1115. Park View is coming up, so if you have an article for the Park View, that would be good to get that in. And also, keep Rally Day, which is going to be September 10th, open. And we are also going to be beginning, beginning a season of peace that will be leading up to Worldwide Communion Sunday on October 1st. And I have been getting some special speakers in place. I don't have commitments from everyone yet, but as soon as I do, I will get the schedule out to you. But I have um, some different people that I have asked related to this season of, of peace and different um, organizations within our community that might come and speak to you about some of the things that they do. Um, and also, this is probably the most important and most important for those of you listening online today. Next week, we're going to try and switch the live streaming over to the new Facebook page. So um, just to give you a heads up, Michael's going to begin taking a look at that and making sure that that can all get switched over. Um, it will, it's been being announced and the new site has been in the weekly emails and um, 
So, and if you have any questions on that or people online have any questions on that, just let us know and we'll get back to you, make sure that hopefully this will go smoothly. We'll see. So, are there any further announcements? Okay. Oh, yes, Karen, I totally forgot. I'm glad you waved your hand. Karen has a special announcement in the back. Yes. Uh, a Haitian family with three children arrived this week in Canandaigua, and they're being helped by Call to Care. The three school-aged children were happy to get school clothes, jackets, and underwear from Common Th Threads yesterday. And as a member of the mission committee, I'd like to thank everyone for their donations to our undies for school, because they were helped. And it sounds like you will meet some of the members September 3rd. <laughs> That's Thank one you. of the special speakers I've been trying to get in place, and I kind of um, have an unofficial <laughs> official that they'll be here on September 3rd. So they will be, you'll meet um, one of the Haitian families after church on 11, or at 11.15, and there will be some speakers from Call to Care at that point. Um, so that's on September 3rd. Also, I forgot to announce this Friday is, I believe, the last of the Erie Canal um, concerts with the Marble Tones, and it's at 6 o'clock um, on the Erie Canal. So bring family, friends, and a lawn, lawn chair for yourself, and it is free. So just an announcement. And also, you'll see that there were signs up about the quiche takeout dinner. That's going to be Friday, September 15th. But it is, as Natalie has said, pre-sale only. So um, make sure that you call or pick up your tickets when you're here on Sundays before September 15th. There's ham and broccoli or vegetarian. So, okay. Let us pray together as we join in worship. Dear Lord, we thank you for your presence with us today, and we just pray that you'll grace our hearts and our minds as we joyously celebrate you together, as we come together as your children, your sisters and brothers, to worship, to give you praise and glory. We pray that your transformation will take place in our hearts and minds as we hear the word read and as we hear and participate in the music today. We thank you for your good grace in our lives and just pray for this focus. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in the call to worship. Children of God, come to the waters. We gather to be restored and renewed. Come with your faith and your doubt. 
we respond to the one who claims and calls us. Come, Christ summons us to draw near. Let us worship God with joy and thanksgiving. Join us for the prayer. Holy God, you speak to us in a voice unexpected and come to us in a ways we do not recognize, never leaving us to our own device or defenses. You are ever present, all powerful God. Call us out in faith again and again until we learn to walk with you in steadfast love and faithfulness and in peace. Amen. Our hymn this morning is number 69, I Love the Lord of Sea and Sky.
When we call upon God, God answers. Even when our steps stray from God's path, and even when our feet slip, God listens to us and answers our prayers. So let us offer our prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Gracious God, you call us to step out in faith, trusting in you for all things. We respond to your command, but then sink in doubt and fear. We hide from the challenges of bold discipleship. We are not able to fulfill your commandments, for our purposes are never in full accord with yours. Forgive us, we pray, when we confess with our lips, but do not believe in our hearts and help us to practice our faith in all circumstances. Lift us out of sin into the arms of your mercy. Though we are distracted by noise all around, allow us to hear your voice, even when it is the sound of sheer silence. And let us all say, Amen. Hear the good news. Your turn. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God forgives us, renews us, refreshes us, and leads us. Let us live our lives as those transformed by the abundant mercy of God. God has received us, pardoned us, and loved us. So let us forgive each other in love and share the peace, the peace of Christ. So peace be with all of you. Would you turn to one another and extend signs of peace to one another? God of our present trouble and promised triumph, open our eyes to see you during our struggles. Open our ears to hear your words of invitation and assurance. Open our minds to recall your wonderful words and miracles. Open our hearts to glory in your name and seek strength in your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A 
I'll be all right. Yeah. I apologize. <clears throat> Sometimes the emotions just come to the surface. Thank you. Our first scripture reading is from Ruth, um, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man in Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elamamech, and the name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Milan and Chilon. They were Aphrodites from Bethlehem and Judah. Apologize for the mispronunciations. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Amalek, the husband of Noemi, died, and she was left with her two sons. Those two Moabite wives, they took two Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpha, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both of her sons died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return to, with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back each for you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them and she wept aloud. They said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back my daughters, why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that you may may become your husbands. Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again, Orpha kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you, to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. <clears throat> Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord do this to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said, no more to her daughter-in-law. The second scripture reading is Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Phesius, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized you with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. He entered the synagogue and for three months spoke out boldly and argued persuasively about the kingdom of God. When some stubbornly refused to believe and spoke evil of the way before the congregation, he left them, 
taking the disciples with him and argued daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. They continued for two years so that all the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. And this is the word of the Lord. Amen. Is asked if there is anybody, if you would like to, um, she is playing a piece today and there's a lot of hand crossing and stuff and she just thought if anybody wanted to come up and watch from behind her that would be fine. So if there's anybody who would like to, Aaliyah would you like to come up and watch? Okay, we come up with me and we'll watch, okay. Come up. There we go. Okay. So we're gonna come. Okay. So you can kind of watch. Okay. Can you see?
So what do you think? Do you think you'd like to be an organ player someday, Leah? You can sit right there. How's that? Okay. Do you want to choose an animal? What would you like? There's some in the basket, too. Ah. That's woolly, right? Yeah. I have a special book today called A Little Spot of Perseverance. Do you see spot there? A little spot. Oh, my. Perseverance is a big word, so we're going to find out what the word means. It says, hi, I'm a little spot of perseverance, and I'm here to help you in tough situations. <gasps> what does perseverance mean? Hmm. Perseverance is when you do your best and you keep trying when things get hard. And it also helps you to finish things you start. So do you see the finish line here? So to finish what you start. Every time you persevere in a challenging situation, your perseverance spot grows. Look, what's he doing? That's right. Very good, Aaliyah. The bigger your perseverance spot gets, the easier it will be to keep you trying when you don't see success right away. Hmm. Sometimes it just takes time and practice. Hmm. What's she practicing? Mm -hmm. She's practicing her letters, right? She's going to get better at writing. Patience can help grow your perseverance spot. So look, it looks like maybe she finished writing her name or got the end right, right? Because it was backwards over here. <laughs> Believing in yourself is sometimes all you need to accomplish when you're trying to, or trying to do. Use positive self-talk and tell yourself you can. So, I can do this. What's he doing? That's right. I can do this. So, he keeps trying. I can do this. And he did it, right? Okay. And confidence can help grow your uh, perseverance spot. Um, try to imagine yourself accomplishing the task before you start. And this can help give you the mindset you need to succeed. So, oh boy, what's she trying to do? Um, hit a, hit a baseball. Yeah, hit a baseball, okay. But she missed the first time, right? Did she miss the second time? Yeah. Oh, is she going to make it yet? No. No. Uh-oh, but look over here. What'd she do? She did it. She did it because she kept up, okay? Sometimes when you try something new and it doesn't turn out like you expect, it can scare you. But getting back up and trying again will give you the chance to be victorious. What's she trying to do in this picture? Ride a bicycle. Yeah. Do you know how to ride a bicycle yet, Aaliyah? No. Not yet. Uh-oh. So what's this going to tell you? You're going to try, right? Are you going to always succeed the first time? No. Oh, what happened? She fell down. So that may happen to you, but what she keep doing? Keeps trying. Keeps trying until she makes it. Courage can help grow that perseverance spot, okay? You can quickly become overwhelmed with frustration if you think you've lost something. Try calming down your angry spot and retracing your steps. So, oh dear, she can't find my unicorn. She's in her toy box, and she can't find it. So is she getting upset? Uh-oh. And she's doing what there? Crying. Crying. Have you ever done that? Mmm. But all of a sudden, being peaceful can grow your perseverance spot. So what does she find? A unicorn. Yeah, where was it? Yeah, it wasn't in the toy chest, was it? <laughs> Success isn't always instant. It can often take a few attempts to make something work, and you might 
need to think outside of the box to accomplish your goal. So here, the cardboard's getting all wet. He's made a boat, right? And it's still getting wet. So what can he add so it won't get wet? Tape. Yeah, he adds some tape, and all of a sudden, his creation floats on the water, right? Yeah, creativity. Listening to feedback. Listening to what people tell you is an excellent way. So like when you're playing on a game, on like a baseball team or a basketball team or other teams, and you listen to the coach, right? And the coach can tell you some things you can do to get better. And so practice is one thing. And I know that Kay practices all the time on the organ because she's always here practicing, right, Kay? I don't know where she went to, but <laughs> she has to practice a lot, too. And then when you're working on a team, it's teamwork. You have to work with the other people, OK? And even if you're talented at something, it can still require training to get better. So here it is, all of his tries. Here's his first try painting, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And he finally comes up with a picture he likes, right? Is that a lot of tries? Yeah, OK. Determination can help grow your spot. It's hard to try again after you lose, but try looking at every loss as an opportunity to learn. So here they're trying to play a game called chess. Have you ever tried that before? Yeah, maybe sometime in the future. But chess is one of those games that you have to keep working at and you get better and better as you play it. Okay? There can be several ways to make something work and that's why it's important to look at all the possibilities. So what's she playing with here? Blocks. Yeah, different blocks and trying them in different ways. But all of a sudden, finally she finds a way that works, right? <laughs> Okay, problem solving. So these are all the different things that the book talked about that you have to do, that you learn when you keep on trying. But that's how you grow that perseverance spot. So can you remember that? Keep on trying and don't give up. Okay. Well, would you like to take the book with you today to read? Okay, I'll let you look at the pictures. Let's pray, though. Are you ready? If you pray after me. Congregation, would you help? Dear Jesus, help us when we want to give up. Help us grow our perseverance spot. And don't let us give up. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us courage. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Valia. Okay. with perseverance. In Acts 19.9, it said, when some stubbornly refused to believe and spoke evil of the way before the congregation, Paul left them, taking the disciples with him and argued daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannius. He didn't give up. He just changed his perspective. What is perseverance? Well, in the book that Stu read today, perseverance was when you do your best and you keep trying when things get hard. It also helps you finish the things you start. And the author, Diane Alber, suggests that time, practice, patience, positive self-talk, confidence, having a positive mindset, optimism, having courage, being peaceful, having creativity, listening to feedback, teamwork, continued training, determination, 
looking at failure as growth and problem solving all contribute to perseverance. And that's quite the list. And I noticed that it included what we talked about last week. Last week, we talked about acting with creativity. To be creative includes the ability to view failure as growth, and it involves risk, which means that we must have courage and be determined. So an online writer confirmed what Diane Alber says in her children's book, and they say, and I quote, perseverance boils down to the drive and the resilience you display while completing an objective. Irrespective of the challenges that emerge or the time it takes you to complete the task, you persist tirelessly and pursue your set goal or goals, unquote. Well, as you can see from both definitions, perseverance involves addressing challenges to complete a given task or a set of goals, and it involves rejecting the urge to quit. Linda Peavy, entitled Session 5 of the Bible Study, which encompassed chapters 15 through 20 of the Book of Acts, with the title, Act with Perseverance. And in her opening to this section, Linda incorporates a, a quote from Scott Wilson that also uses the word challenge. Scott says, and I quote, following Christ is the most glorious and yet the most challenging thing we'll ever do, unquote. Well, obviously, being a disciple or a follower of Jesus means that we are going to come up against challenges which in turn means that we are going to have to act with perseverance. The Apostle Paul faced many challenges during his second and third missionary journeys. These challenges came in many different forms, from changes in missionary partners, to threats on his life and those that journeyed with him, to those who weren't open to hearing what he had to say. And it sometimes involved incarceration. Paul faced each challenge, but like the Energizer bunny he kept on, he rejected the urge to quit. Challenges are a part of life, and like Paul, we will have to face the challenges head on if we are to complete our task, our goal of carrying out Christ's mission in this time and place. Our challenges may not involve threats to our life, but they may involve threats to the life of this church congregation. We must reject the urge to quit. What then does it mean for us to have perseverance? It may help us to discover what the word perseverance means from a scriptural point of view. So the Greek word that's used in Hebrews 10.36 is hupopone. Um, Hebrews 10.36 says, For you need endurance, and it stands for constancy under suffering in faith and duty. Well, the article I was reading called What the Bible Says About This Word states that the word constancy, constancy indicates that persistent effort is being made, in this case against a pressing trouble. Another definition might be quality of character that does not allow one to surrender. So our bi biblical definition points to both character and persistence as two traits needed to endure or to persevere. John Rittenbaugh, the writer of this, um, the writer of the actual article that I was referencing on the word hupopone makes an interesting comment, and he says, compared to God, we operate on fast time. Almost everything in our lives seems to have to be done or received right now, or our faith begins to evaporate and we lose, or, I'm sorry, faith begins to evaporate and we lose heart. Well, this then adds to our list of challenges which we must combat if we are to act with perseverance. 
Most things take time, and when we try to rush the process, we often find ourselves in trouble or causing more trouble. Paul's missionary journeys were not completed in a day. He covered over 3,000 miles on each journey, staying longer where there was both need and acceptance. In the Bible study, Linda Peavy pointed out that on each missionary journey, Paul took the time to stop and encourage those churches that he had started on the first and second missionary journeys. And she stresses that this same encouragement is needed in our own journeys and in the journeys of our fellow Christian brothers and sisters. We need to take the time to encourage one another. I found the following definition from an old online Democrat and Chronicle article that I really liked about encouragement. And it says, encouragement is the giving of courage, confidence, hope, support, and help. It's the process of building each other up, coming alongside another, strengthening the weak and sick, and consoling the troubled, unquote. Sometimes we get so focused on the goal that we forget that the journey is what is important. Paul was an interesting and determined character. I don't think he was the easiest man to live with. He was driven to fulfill his call, his mission to the Gentiles. And yet, he was concerned for those who had come to the faith, vigilant for their welfare, their treatment of each other, their growing in the Holy Spirit, and their remaining true to the faith as he understood it. And if we are to have perseverance in our day and age, we need to follow Paul in our encouragement, not tearing down each other, we need to constantly seek to build each other up. This includes active listening and acknowledgement of everyone and their ideas. And then as a group, yes, like geese, we need to move forward as one to promote God's work. Not one individual or a small group, but what is going to be and work best for the whole body. In an article already referenced, it stresses that perseverance is the direct result of our habits. The more we overcome our fears and challenges, the more resilient we become. That's that growing of the spot, right, Aaliyah, that we talked about? I think this is obvious in the life of the Apostle Paul, but it can be found in other stories in the Bible. This is one reason why I chose to read from the Old Testament story of Ruth, this first chapter contains much hardship. A woman and her husband leave their homeland with their two sons to escape starvation. In the foreign land, the two sons meet and marry women, and then all the men in the family die. This leaves the women alone in a patriarch patriarchal society where they have no power or prestige. Naomi, the mother-in-law, decides to return home to Judah. The two daughters-in-law start to follow, but she encourages them to go back to their own Moabite families. She has nothing left to offer them. One returns, but the other, Ruth, makes a decision, a choice, and nothing, not even Naomi's entreaties, can stop her. Ruth is determined she will not give up. The result? Due to her perseverance, Ruth ends up marrying Boaz, becoming the mother of Obed, the father of Jesse, the father of King David. Ruth becomes part of Jesus' ancestry, and this is a direct result of her persistence to remain with Naomi and to continue to pursue Naomi's God. Like the Apostle Paul and Ruth, the church today is called to act with perseverance. I found three suggestions for developing perseverance that affirm our biblical stories. And I believe these three suggestions pertain to Park Presbyterian Church, to each of you in this congregation, as well as the church as a whole. How do we develop perseverance? First, we reject the urge to quit. 
Recently, I asked a presbytery's executive presbyter to come and speak, and it was done quite innocently. Unfortunately, the talk caused some anxiety. Why? Some felt that she was too negative. Some felt that the presbytery was encouraging the sale of the building. Though these were topics, what she was really saying was that all churches need to develop a plan for their future. This isn't an easy task for any church. One thing I want to make clear is that Park Presbyterian Church is not shutting its doors. What it is doing is what I call laying all the cards on the table. What are Park's options as we move into the future? No decisions have been made. The only decision that was made at last week's congregational discussion was that the session needs to form a committee made up of both session members and congregational members and ask, or task them with the responsibility of presenting three potential plans for moving forward. Park is not quitting, in fact, just the opposite. It's taking charge of its future. Park is rejecting the urge to quit. How do you develop perseverance? Second, you create an action plan. And Paul did this. He made plans to travel through the Roman Empire. Sometimes the Holy Spirit told him no and led him in a different direction. He was open to this change. This may happen to Park. We will eventually put a plan into action, but it may have to be adjusted as time goes on. Ruth put a plan into action. She didn't know what her future with Naomi would bring. She trusted in God. Session will task this committee to consider plans for moving forward and to do the legwork and the research needed to come up with the potential three best avenues to pursue in terms of a five and a 10 year plan. These plans will then be presented to both the session and the congregation. The focus on doing this is mission, God's mission. What is God calling us to do? How do you develop perseverance? The third way to develop perseverance is to get out of our comfort zone. This reinforces what we said last week. Being willing to risk allows for creativity and breaks the status quo. Being open to looking at new ways of doing old things, of getting to the heart of why we do what we do, and considering the possibility of looking at doing those things in a new way, and of being open to failure, of making mistakes and considering those as growth experiences. Park Church is already doing some new things. It has tried some new things. It continues to tweak. I ask you to keep an open mind as we continue to work and minister together to create new opportunities to be open to God saying no to some things and yes to others, and to steadily move forward one day at a time, trusting God to guide us. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, sometimes we get so caught up and we forget to take one day at a time to be appreciative of the way that you are at work in our lives and the life of the church here in our family's congregation. And so we take a moment to give you thanks, to give you praise, to put our focus solely on you, to open our hearts and minds to what it may be that you are calling us to do as a church body here in this time and place. Guide us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us continue to respond to God's word through singing. Just a closer walk with thee, 835.
We are going to skip to the prayers of the people. Are there any online, Michael? Okay. Do we have, um, there were a couple of added prayers. Carol Hoopright, um, I was asked to add, to add, and that is Thelma Vermeulen's sister. Did you, was that right? Susan, I guess so. I think that was right. Okay, any others from the congregation? Yes, Scott? Going into palliative care, um, they're trying to make him comfortable, and then they'll be sending him home. So his journey with leukemia is uh, coming to a close, it seems. We're sorry about that. Let us pray together as God's people. Creator God, as we consider Paul's missionary journeys and his perseverance, may we consider our own journeys in the journey of Park Presbyterian Church. You speak to us and guide us, but sometimes we aren't listening. Help us to stop and listen for your still, small voice. Make us aware of your wishes. Transform our hearts and minds and aid us as we seek to use the gifts and talents you have bestowed to do your missionary work in this time and place. And help us to glean from Paul's perseverance the courage and determination to complete the task that we face and deepen our faith and trust so that we will not give up but have the stamina to run the race that you have set before us. Redeemer God, We pray for your world, our world. Bring your shalom, your wholeness, healing, and peace. To that end, we pray for Ukraine and Russia and Sudan and Afghanistan, for Niger and Haiti and Mexico and Iran and India, Palestine and Israel, and those on the island of Maui and so many others who need your help and compassion and mercy, who need courage in the face of disaster. Be with those in the wake of the newest storm, Hillary, and with those who still recover from the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, and for others still recovering from recent but past hurricanes, flooding, and tornadoes. Give them hope, determination, and courage. Give them perseverance, we pray. Sustain our God, we pray for healing prayers for our churches, our nations, our communities, and our families for our friends and for all those who are our neighbor, friend and foe alike, whom you call us to love. We continue our prayers for Don. We continue our prayers for Mark Booth and Donna Merrill. We continue our prayers for Lisa Barrett's son, for Bethany Camilla, for Deb Comfer and Shannon, for Joe and Lori Hattendorf, for Kay Gray, and for Kay Oosterling, for Aaron and James and Glenn and Todd, for Richard and William and Douglas, for Christine and Wanda Gallagher, Lisa Tremitty and Sandy Rood, for Becky Durr and David, for Steve, Linda Laurie, Barb, Janine Dutcher, Caitlin Tracy, Kathy Brunessel and David Wilk, for Bev Owen and Jan Smith, for Allison Holloway and Nancy Thayer, for Shirley Kem and Karen Freddie, for Kristen Muncie and Kelly Kelly, Janine King, for John, friend of Emily Lang, and for Deanna Side, for Sheldon Hayes and Ellen Hopkins, for Barb Miller, for Daniel Allerton, for Carol Hubright, and Family Promise Families. We pray for those who are caregivers, and we continue to lift up Jean and Paul Salisbury, Kay and Dale Groover, Thelma Vermeulen, Barb Chapel, Bonnie and Thurlow Hammond, Ed and Cheryl Lotz, Barbara Bruner, Eileen Burr, Marion Maxwell, Jim and Ann Beck, Peck, sorry, and Lynn Blodger. We pray for those who grieve. We ask for your shalom and peace upon the friends and family of Jerry Silowa and Barbara Diesering, for Yahoo and Mark Simon, for Marilyn Wilson on the loss of her friend Ann Hooper, and for Judy Leone and her family on the loss of her brother David Porter, and for the friends and family of Shirley May, 
and for Suzanne Bowens and the family of Hazel Washburn, and for the friends and family of Caroline Jean Patchett. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and we join our voices in prayer, the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to respond to God's word. Because God cares for all without distinction and is generous to all beyond measure, so we, God's people, are to care for all with generosity and gladness. We bring our offerings to be used for God's good purposes in the church and in the world. Let us stand as you are able and sing Give Thanks. you join in the prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for your sustaining presence and abundant grace. Receive now these gifts we bring to you out of your generous provision in our lives. May they be used to satisfy the hungry in famine, relieve the oppressed in time of trouble, and proclaim everywhere the good news of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our last hymn, just be careful, calm down. Our last hymn is When Peace Like a River, and we're just doing verses one and four, so 840. Sure. Thanks, Richard. <laughs>
Step out in faith, trusting that the God who has called you is able to keep you from falling and holds you in love. And now may the steadfast love and faithfulness of God surround you, the peace of Christ enfold you, and the Holy Spirit encourage you, now and forever. And let us all say, Amen. Amen.